Me, I want that moment of discovery and that just the adrenaline rush that you get when you see something for the first time. One ROV, two kilometers in the deepest area, and it's just a different world. It's just like science fiction, but it's the reality. Welcome to the live feed from ROV Sebastian, currently 2,000 meters below the Gulf of California. The possibility for discovery is so, so immense here. Okay, this is even trippier. Can you go down a little bit and get a better look up? Big old bat. Holy cow. What? <laughs> this place has so much to teach us about biogeochemistry, microbiology, origins of life, novel metabolisms, and gives you a whole new perspective about how the world works. They're the most beautiful uh, microbial biofilms. The sheer diversity of colors that we saw in that one video was absolutely unprecedented. I have never seen anything like that. Colorful enzymes are kind of like a flashing red light for us humans going, hey, look over here. This is a really interesting organism that's doing something really fascinating. Processes happen faster here. Organisms that you might not find in abundance in other places are abundant here. Like the microbes, you know, we have no idea what kind of antibiotics to come out of the different microbes at the bottom of the ocean. Look at these microbial mat distributions. The color boundaries are very sharp. White, yellow, yellow, orange, pink, orange, you know, there's very little overlap. And why is that? Is that because of geochemistry or is that because of competition? You know, this is my territory and if you come over here, I'm going to produce an antibiotic that kills you. I like to think of myself as a detective who's trying to eavesdrop on these microbial conversations. In the oil and gas industry, we always called it just sea snow. But when you have a 4K camera like we have that we can zoom in, and it's almost like having a microscope subsea, we can now see that there are actually organisms and larvations and siphonophores and all these things that I now know the names of. When you pick up a rock with the arm of the ROV, you don't necessarily expect to see an explosion of life. We could see the worms moving around. Not until I watched the video later did I see all of the little things bouncing around. And that's when you realize, you know, my God, this isn't a rock, it's an ecosystem. Crazy hydrothermal rock full of noxious chemicals, you know, arsenic and selenium, and it's potentially radioactive, and yet it is teeming with life. And that's just astonishing to me. And you think about what you can learn from studying something like that. It's a tremendous opportunity. I think it's really important to push boundaries. I mean, think of it this way. We could have been using 720p cameras and we could have still been getting images of the ocean floor. Why have we switched to 4K cameras? It's that exact same fascination with trying to push the boundaries that we are trying to do with our instruments. Oh, look at the gas vent. Oh, that's gorgeous. There's our acoustic signature. Bing, bing, bing. Maybe you have some videos even of, you know, when these gassy cores are coming up, you see them bubbling and spewing out due to the, you know, change in pressure from the bottom of the ocean up to the surface. And so when that's happening, methane is bubbling out. And so when we measure uh, methane concentration from the deep sea sediments in our traditional way, we're missing a lot. Methane is 30 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than CO2. And what we're doing down there is looking at organisms that eat and produce methane and understanding their metabolism can have an application in science and how we deal with our rapidly changing world. You know, maybe there's an organism in the bottom of the, the Guaymas Basin that can just oxidize hydrocarbons at warp 5 better than any other organism known, and we might be able to use that organism or its metabolic byproducts to accelerate, you know, oil cleanup after a spill in the ocean, for example. 
One of the biggest things to take away from this expedition is we are finding these unique ecosystems that we know so little about, and they're amazing. But then two meters away is piles and piles of plastic bags, balloons, and the detritus of the human race. It's devastating to see that impact on these ecosystems before we even fully understand them. This can really affect organisms. One of the most vivid and disturbing images or memories I have from this cruise was of uh, a squid that had ingested fishing line and choked on it. In plastic you can see, imagine the stuff that's out there that we can't see. The water is warming, oxygen concentrations are dropping. Jacques Cousteau has this famous saying, you know, people protect what they love. I mean, when people really care about something, you know, they put their money down, they put their sweat equity into it, and they want to make a difference. They want to do something about it to make it better. And that's how I think change happens. The beauty and majesty of these systems by communicating their importance to the natural world, to global biogeochemical cycles on this earth, we're making people fall in love with the ocean. What we learn from here, we can really translate to the rest of the oceans and really understanding and predicting how the oceans will change in the coming decades. We still have time to address this problem, to highlight and underscore ways to make things better, to change the way people think about things. All right, as much as I would like to stay here for a long time, we have to start making our way back.